Uh, name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, nah, no more there. Walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. When I mean all, I mean all. I mean on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. You name it, we're on it. We just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. Pop up first in line. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you see all our visuals. Just check it out. Because let me tell you, don't forget hit hit that subscribe button and that notification button so you don't miss out on any of this fire content we're giving out every single day. Thank you very much. And... We love you. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, man, listen, man. We down here in Miami, man. And we could not come down here and just sit up in this city, man, without talking to the comedian, the baddest man in the land, Marvin Dixon. What's happening, man? Appreciate y'all having me as a guest. And she, you're real Jamaican, huh? Yes. I heard that accent. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Jamaican. That was Marvin real Jamaican. Dixon is in the building, man. Yes. Come on. Highly recommended by Squancho himself, man. What's going on, man? I'm chilling, man. That's my ace, man. That's your ace? Yeah, one thing about this business, I always say I'm cool with everybody, but I don't mess with nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this business and comedy, I'm cool with everybody, I don't mess with nobody. Man, let's talk about it. Let's go down through there on it. So, were you born and raised here? I was raised here. Okay. My mom had me uh, in Evanston, Illinois. She was pregnant, that water broke. She was out of town. Mm. <laughs> so that's why I was born that. My sister was born in LA, pregnant, water broke. She and does she don't like to sit still. It's my daddy following my daddy around. Town oh. to town, city to city. What so was your daddy doing? I don't know. <laughs> I'm what they told me is like he had to work, but he ain't had that many jobs. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> yeah, I was about to say, what was his career? Hey, no, my daddy was wild back in the days. Oh. From what I found out from other oh. people. He was wild. So she was following because she was trying to make sure he's not doing that? I don't know. <laughs> I, mama might have been a gangster too. Exactly. You got to get old and that innocent. You be like, uh, man, you did something. Hey, something. You heard what he said. I don't know. He bet not know. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got no reason to know. When you were, it, when we were raised up, when you young and you from where we from, black people were told not to know. Boy, you better get out. Why are you looking in my mouth? There's so many different yes. things that black people had. They sayings is so dope. Like, that, and <laughs> and no other nationality understand our phrases or sayings. Right. If you black in color. I don't care if you're Jamaican, Haitian, they got some stuff to stabilize them kids. <laughs> a look, a voice, uh, a nudge, you knew what that meant. A pinch. Right, you knew what that meant. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. like other cultures. My daddy could get up and just look at you and you knew not to do nothing that week, the whole week. He, you knew he was gonna have a good week or a bad week by the color of his eyes. <laughs> mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I watched my daddy beat somebody up in front of me. Oh, uh -uh. oh yeah. How old were you? I had to be about Five or six, he beat the hell out the dude. Yeah, what that, did he do? I don't know. The guy came in, they had exchange of words and wop wop, and my daddy like split split his head open and to the white meat. And I know when I got home, I was quiet in the car, <laughs> like a female in a domestic violence relationship. <laughs> I was in the car just looking outside the window. I ain't, I just knew not to get on my dad. Man. Bad side. Side. Once I seen that. He whooped the man in front of me. I don't think it was planned. I just happened to be with him and he ran into. And black people, when they say it's on sight, it's on sight. It's on mm -hmm. sight. No matter who you with, who mm -hmm. they with. And I guess that's what it was back then. Wow. wow. You say your daddy was wild, but how he many kids, how many kids did your daddy have? Uh six, I found out. Three, me and my two sisters. I found out I had an, another brother older. Then I found out later I had another brother. Then I found out later I had another brother. Oh, okay. And all okay. of them was older than me except one. Except from one? Yeah. Wow. But the crazy part, I'm So your mama must have knew about them then because they came before her. Uh-uh, because I told my mom about one as I got older. Mm. You know how it was back in the day. Social media came out now, cameras everywhere, people get caught. Back in the days, your daddy had a family on the other side of town you ain't know nothing about to the funeral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's just mm -hmm. how it was. I, that's true. That's just how it was, my, honestly. My daddy was one that you know, he had a lot of women. We knew that. He had divorced my mom in nine. They, they bring over the plates and the mixtapes. You know what I mean? <laughs> they bring over the plates and the love song mixtapes. I knew it was going down. You know what I'm saying? They have all type of food. I really didn't eat it because I, I was really a sandwich guy. We ate bologna sandwiches back in the day. They don't do that no more. Back in the day, we ate, we y'all didn't have bologna sandwiches. 
What you talking about? So, but you know the safe slim. That when people you don't put, eat bologna sandwiches like that. You put like it in that. that pan and pop up. You flip Ooh, it over, and pop you up, flip and, it over, and then you suck that red. Come cream. on, man. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, though. Do you see them doing that no more? They don't. They don't fell off the bologna Kids sandwich. Don't go outside and play. <laughs> no bikes out. Just we go just there. That. They don't go outside and play. They stay inside. Remember, your mom told you you can go outside. Mm -hmm. You will have a fit, almost break out. Right. These kids don't. If you tell them to stay in, if you make them go outside, they have a fit. You make them go outside. It's they good. have a fit because mm -hmm. they want to stay in and play games and stuff. We didn't play video games. That's just the, the and that's, that tells you kind of, you know, God is real, bro. Yes. So he already preparing them for whatever is coming ahead. I already yeah. know that. So the robot thing and all that stuff, a lot of time those being in those rooms and understanding technology may be something that eventually is something they're going to have to use in order to even protect themselves. Well, they it, are because you see what I'm saying. Technology is, and, and so they got to be ready. Think about when you was coming up. There was no such thing as the podcast. No, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. it was just now, the radio if network don't want to give you something, you start your own avenue. You don't need them. You don't need them no more. That's why I got much love for y'all. When y'all called me about coming here, I almost tore my transmission up. I was man, I be thank here. you, man. Mm -hmm. I appreciate no the problem. love, man. Like I said, I've had a lot of uh, comedians on here from Faison Love, Scruncho, Carlos Miller, Chico Bean, the list go on. That Rod D guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know Rod D? He's up in L.A. Louis Belt, one of my dogs. I just I talked to him the day before yesterday. Yeah. Uh, man, it's just a lot of you guys, man. And it, it, Pepper. You remember Pepper? Mm -mm. Pepper, the one that was out there when, when Charleston White threw the flower pot. He oh, was a, yeah. He yeah. was the opening act. Yeah. Yeah. And now, I've seen that episode when he threw from, he was in Texas mm -hmm. somewhere performing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he threw yeah. the flower pot. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a hell of a night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one thing about comedy, man. Yes. I, I've watched a lot of them come up there, man, and they get up on that stage. Bubba Dub. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Country Wayne. I, Chico I, Bean. I, yeah, I'd say Chico. But it's like, you guys are, are definitely dope, man. Uh, Chucky Ducky, we Quite did wild. him too. You know what I'm saying? Like just a lot of you guys, man, talented night after night, going up on that stage, man. I got to get to the point of how you came in to come. Did you was you through with your end? As far as on the uh, not really, but you can go ahead. Yeah, okay, because I wanted to get everything she was gonna uh -huh. get out of you before I get into your comedy oh, life. But you got up there and got booed off the stage the first time. Me. Yeah, you. No, I didn't. Okay, well, tell me what happened. My first time ever on stage, a friend of the family kept trying to get me to go to a comedy show in Miami. Come here, man. You, let's go to the show. Let's go to what the show. What year was it? This had to be in 92. 92. That's 92. And I wouldn't go. I would never go. I was doing something. Finally, I went. I watched the show, seen the comedians, and they had three open micers would go up, and I say. I'm funnier than them. That's what I said to myself. Louis and, Bell said the same and thing. And he said, man, that's why I told you. So he brought me again the second time, but this time they signed my name up in the open mic night. Was you nervous? Telling. I didn't know. Oh, you didn't know? Up. They called one comic, called another comic, and they say, the last open mic of the night, give it up for Marvin Dixon. I looked around and said, somebody got the same name as me. And they grabbed me by each arm because I was sitting between two of my friends and they threw me on stage, like threw me up. We was right in the front row. And I went up there and went off my head and did good. It's a three minute set. And my friend said, the reason I did that is because if you had time, if you had to sit home and write and prepare, you wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you instinctively can go off your head. Wow. So that's what I did. And I just kept doing it till I got better. And within, a, I'm gonna say within a few weeks, I was, I was the host. Wow. You was the host. In a few I ended up weeks. being a host in a few weeks. That's quick. Cause the regular host was moving and she told them, Wanda Smith, shout out to her. Wanda Smith said, you need to get that young guy with them glasses to host. And they found me and I went there and I started hosting. And got Kill. better and better. And then after that, then I started doing my own nights. So I was within less than six months, I was doing my own comedy, my own shows where I was bringing comics in. Because I, I learned the business of it. And that's a good thing. Yeah. like. And that's what I'm talking about, man. And, and that's just, really to me, that's God and uh, destiny. I can tell you something that any comic you ever talk to that know me or heard of me will tell you. In the 32 years I've been doing this, no comic can never say I ain't never give them all the money we agreed upon. Wow. Nobody can say I put them in a raggedy hotel. I've always treated them brothers and sisters like they was... A, a A level comic, even though they were just starting out or whatever, I just treat everybody the way I wanted to be treated. And I used to hate when people try to throw me in a, a days in, a super mm -hmm. eight. So what I would do is 
they throw me in Days in Super 8, I get my own hotel. And they be saying, hey man, I'm outside the hotel. I say, I switch, man, I'm at Double Tree. Wow. So that's what I would do. The one thing I can tell you, man, is um, comedy is, is, is something that's needed it for is. our people and our culture. Just the way that it, 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 you can take a wife out or some friends out and go out and laugh and have, mm-hmm. a, have a nice bite to eat and just hang out with good people. And it's a good vibe to smile and laugh. You yeah. know what I mean? Because there's so many things that people frown upon. When are some of the times when you was on that stage and some things that touched you that you remember? You know what? Every time I get on stage, because I have a quote that I always say, at that brief moment I'm performing, I, I was a part of that person day. Mm-hmm. I made their day in that brief moment because people could be sick, going through financial situations, but at that brief moment, I made them forget about that, they woes or whatever. Wow. Um, I think, you know, um, when you think about just a comedian in the world that, that it's, it, it leads, man, you do hear about a lot of times people say they didn't get paid or something went wrong, you know, or, man, he screwed me that time, you know. Um, I remember Carlos Miller and what was the other, Curran Claywon, they came. Yeah. Both of them, uh, I asked both of them about the story and it was a, one time they got booked and when they got booked, they got there and the guy didn't have all the stuff, didn't feel the room, didn't market it. When are some times when you got to a place in other states that, you know, you wasn't throwing the show and it became a complicated situation? Well, uh, when I was younger, starting out, I've gotten a fight before where I just, Growing up in Miami, we learn if you get an argument, you swing first. Yeah. If they whoop you, you still got that first good lick. So I would talk to the other comics because none of us get paid. And I said, hey, man, we can, I think we can whoop. It'd be like five guys and three of us. I think we can get with them. They might not beat us that bad as three of us. And literally, I've gotten in the fights to get my money. The crazy part is some promoters have your money. The key is they not going home broke. They just, I'm going home with all this money. You ain't getting nothing. And it happens. The best of them they got, I done seen people get guns pulled on them. I've seen people get in the fights with promoters. And later you blame the comic. Hey, ain't nobody come see you. You didn't promote, even now. Because of technology, I hate when a promoter tell me, uh, I've had this contract. You got to promote it on social media five times a week, all the way until the show. And then the week of the show, seven times a day. I just told him I don't want to do the show. No. I said, what, I'm, 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 I'm supposed to be the comedian, you the promoter. That's right. They don't want to promote no more. They don't want to promote. They want you to promote. Comedy has kind of transitioned to change, though. I got to say that. It ain't what it used to be, man. It used to be. Change for the better or worse? To me, it's, it's, it's both. Okay, tell me the pros and cons. One, you can get out there quicker because of social media. Mm-hmm. You can do something crazy, set yourself on fire, get two million followers in a week because you did something crazy. But you still aren't skilled enough as a comedian. And what I hate about it is, and a white guy told me this, I never forget, a promoter, white promoter. And at, he used to be the biggest in the world. He said- What's his name? Uh, I ain't gonna say his name. Okay. But he was the biggest in the world. In the world? The world. The world, Craig. From the 70s, the 80s, he was the biggest promoter in the world. Mm. And he was at, used to come to my show, I didn't know who he was till so someone introduced me. He said, you know what's so funny about your people? He said, we can get somebody we know not ready, not seasoned, not prepared, and mm-hmm. throw them on stage and y'all will pay whatever to see them. We won't do our own people like that. Like when comics blow up off of the internet, right. some of them blow up so fast, they don't, they scared to do open mic night and yeah. work as routine now. They think I gotta go up there. So what they start doing is stealing other people's jokes. What they also start doing is uh, just talking to people, talking to people, but not doing a joke. And back in the days, you had to be ready. You had to get on that stage, go. You had to be funny, you had to work till you was prepared, and promoters wouldn't book you if they know you weren't funny. Now they will book you because you got followers. Mm -hmm. And that's the crazy part, because a lot of brothers aren't prepared, and they go out there. I did a show one time, the dude got booed so bad, the promoter going, hey man, I need you to go back up. No, you paid him all the money. Mm You better tell him to do a cartwheel or dance or something because I'm not going back up. Was that a guy th- from the internet? Yeah, that's yeah. he blew up off the internet. But that- sometimes they're thinking that the the viewers equals 
um, followers, followers, Us. people who will follow, who will we'll pay, pay to be in those seats. But they're right a lot of times as well too. That that goes both ways. But that's just a part of transition. You got guys that are internet guys that do fill up Coliseum. Country Wayne's yeah. one of them. But but white guys do some stupid online. They not headlining no club. Mm. What them agents do is get them a writer. They get them prepared, make them work out in them rooms all over the country, just Got regular it. rooms, and then they prepare their at least give them 30 minutes. Black acts, I hate to say this, they'll do something, then they throw them out there. And then they, they're not ready. And they it's like on the job training. So to do something is just the internet, really, because that's the newest thing that's pushing com- people to feel like they can get into yeah. comedy. But, but, see, but you, I talked, to, was Alex Thomas? Comedian Alex uh-huh. Thomas said that uh, boy. he was like, one, what he tell us? He said, three minutes of funny is not a whole set. It's not. He say, show me what you can do in a set. Then I'll, I'll believe that you are a true comic. You know what I mean? And the internet is different. You can do something crazy. You got time to split, slice, add, um, dub this, add this, add laugh tracks. Because it's not live. It's not live. But when you get on stage, it's like acting. You can act in the movie, but doing the stage play is totally different. That's right. Because you got to go. Ain't no mistake. You got to ride out. And that's how comedy is. You got to be funny that entire time. And, you know, they get agents or whatever, and agents ask for crazy money. And I'm not knocking them. Get their money. But I've told a lot of young people, you, if you're going to do this for real and you serious, learn the craft. That's all I ask you. If somebody gave me a plane right now, I can't fly it. I'm not gonna get in there and play like I can fly. I might learn, read the book, read the manual, get my flight hours, then I'll try to fly the plane. I'm not just gonna jump in there and say I'm gonna fly. And that's what they do, they just fly. Let me ask you about when you seen um, Cat Williams on uh, that Shannon, Shannon Sharp, Sharp. Uh, uh-huh. interview. What did you think, because it was one of the most, it was the ex- most explosive interview in ever. 2024, ever. for sure. To me, ever. Ever for you, but you know, um, yeah, I mean, when you say interview, yeah, because those podcasts, there's no yeah. other, well, YouTube, it's it's the top interview ever on YouTube. Yes. So what was it like for you that just watching that, and how many times did you watch it? I watched it. First, I watched the entire thing. Then I watched um, the clip. snippets of it. Then I watched it again from beginning to end. But when I did that, me personally, I wouldn't, call out other comics like that because we all still in the family it's like a family reunion and you got a crazy drunk uncle i ain't gonna call my uncle out i put him to the side and talk mm-hmm. to him but that man wanted that's his life he wanted to speak his piece well i don't knock him for what he's doing i, I won't do he it. held back a lot a, a long time a lot of the people that he was referring to he felt like they had already came for him in a certain in some of those situations right because he hadn't did an interview in a long time <laughs> before that <laughs> well he, he he damn sure had receipts i know because <laughs> he was really Ooh. really going in on every situation um you know and it just was crazy to me how how he uh how he did it and how explosive it was, but I know he's talented and I've watched his funny for a long time. Right, and then I watched his interview on uh, Willie D. Mm-hmm. He, cause he did Willie D like, had to be the- Right after. Right after No, no, that. no, it was, re- it was before. Oh, Willie D was Willie before D, that. Willie D just brought it out after, but it was before. Oh, he, he just did. rode the bandwagon. He, he basically, he had already had that in his See, I didn't know that. Yeah, I just know it from talking to certain people. Right. And one Don't thing about, listen to him. He talked about it too. Yeah, one thing about Cat. Cat is outspoken. It's certain people you can't cancel in, in comedy. You can't cancel Dave Chappelle. I don't think you can cancel Cat Williams. I don't think so. And the reason why their bulk of their money is stand up, is on the road. And there are millions of people agree on their comments, topics, and everything, and we'll come and see them Mm -hmm. over and over and over. Whereas, you know, Kevin Hart, Kevin main thing is film. Mm -hmm. You know, so he don't want to, might not want to ruffle feathers. Steve Harvey, TV, film, radio, he don't want to ruffle feathers. And that's what happened, a lot of brothers don't want to, Cat don't care. It's like when Dave Chappelle did a special, the LGBTQ community went at him. So he did another special and went at him again. Right then, that show, you can't cancel me. 
You got people that's like that, man. You know, when Brandon T. Jackson came on the show, he was basically just, you know, happy that his name was mentioned. Right. Um, a lot of people were happy that their name was mentioned. Some people were upset that they were upset. Well, maybe that's a little because harsh. Because their was sales little, went up. They, yeah. they were booked more. Do the you think it helped or hurt the comedy world? Well, Kat? Yeah. It helped the ones he didn't mention. <laughs> I've been booked. <laughs> But the ones who were mentioned, some of them say that, you know, they were sold out. Yeah, like people, Brandon, Brandon T. Jackson said yeah. he sold out. Yeah. People because wanted to see what it. he had to say. Remember this. I don't care. Negative always turns to positive. Right. You could talk about somebody till they blew in the face and then they, they show a sellout. And I always tell people negative publicity always turns out positive. I don't That's care true. with nobody. Unless you did something to some little kids or uh, beating a woman or something like that. But... When it comes to beefs with comedians, you talking about a joke or he ain't funny or she ain't funny. Comedy is, that's your choice, like food. You know, everybody got their appetite, what they like, stuff they do like and don't like. Comedy is the same way. You can't get mad at nobody. I never say nobody's not funny. I just say they're not funny to me. Yeah. But if people like them, I book them. Yeah. Because I'm one of the few people, like I said, I do my, I have a, I'm, I think I might be the only one in the Southeast to have a residency at a casino. Oh. Mm. I have a residency at a casino that I've been doing for over eight years. Wow. Which I do one? On the casino at Daniel Beach. Okay. I do it for uh, over a thousand some seats and I sell it out 95% of the time. Wow. And I bring in funny comedians. And it's only in the South though. Southeast, that's what Southeast, I'm saying. Where he at. He's here. It's not too far from here, yeah. by Fort Lauderdale Airport. Casino, okay. Which is dope. I, I yeah. love it, bro. I got. I was blessed. I believe be. you deserve that because you've been doing this since 92. Yeah, I, I did the improv for years. I had my own night. I'm the one started the Urban Nights at the improv. Really? I started the Urban Nights at the improv. Mm. Which improv was that? The, the Miami one improv. Nobody and, else was and, doing... And Miami improv. Other improvs might do a get. I started, like, now the improv and... L.A. do, uh, D-Ray do on Monday nights, uh, other comic, but I started it because I used to book them before they were wow. f- f- top-notch known. I used to book all of them. I'm the first person to ever book Mike Epps. Really? Mm. And gave Mike Epps his first paid gig ever in, in, in his life doing What comedy. year was that? That was in 90, uh, it might be, I think, 94. I mean, Where was that? Done. Miami, I, had, I was doing a club called Studio 183. How was that? How did you put that together? My little sister was going to school in Atlanta. And she was saying, it's this guy named Mike Epps. He do voice. It's good. You need to see him. He's just an amateur, though. I went to Atlanta and seen him. And I say, man, you really can stretch that bitch you do. Because he did a lot of characters. You talked to him? Yeah. And what did you tell him? I said, you can stretch that bitch you do. Because Mike used to... Imitate a lot of rappers. Okay. Ice T, X Men, I mean, the man from the X Clan. He used to imitate them. And I said, You could stretch that, man. And he said, You think so? Yeah. And he started doing it. And I booked him. And he came down to his first paid gig ever. First person to ever fly him in and pay him. Okay. And you did that uh, way back then. That was in the early 90s. Early 90s. Mike now, Epps. Let's fast forward to today's time. Yeah. When Mike see you, do he show, show you love. that same love? Mike did an interview recently and they said, who's the first person that gave you your break in this business? The first person that ever just knew you had. He said, a comedian named Marvin Dixon in Miami was the first person to ever book me, ever. Wow. His first three gigs. He always tell me, Marvin gave me my first three gigs. And I was a young comic. I was young. But I just started learning the business of it. Guy Tory, I was the first one to ever book him and pay him. Wow. wow. Uh, Dion Cole. No, 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 we're going to stop. How did, how did you end up linking with Guy Tory? Well, after a while now, I didn't start making motion. When I first started, my first show was seven people. Okay. Seven people. My first show ever I promoted. I built that up to every Tuesday night, I had 1,500 to 2,000. Wow. Every week. I had more people in my one night than the improvs had the whole weekend. Mm. Wow. And they was like, who is this guy got all these people here? Because I was a young comic. Marvin, what was the key to, you feel, to making that happen? Hustle. A lot of hustle. That's why I tell promoters now, don't tell me nobody ain't got a name. Don't tell me nobody not known that they don't draw. I can make them draw. And the key, it's like I grew up in Miami. Growing up in Miami, what was Miami known for? Uh, rappers and drugs. It, even before the, before the rappers, uh, drugs. drugs. It was cocaine capital. Yeah. You see all them hustlers. 
I used to always think, how they gonna market that? Let people know they product good and everything, and it's illegal. I tell people, watch your hustler. He gotta he gotta market something, promote something that he can't tell you what he got because it's illegal. And what you're doing is legal, it's easier. I went to every black barbershop, every beauty salon, every record store back in the day. I went to all of them. I used to get an owner tickets, free tickets, but can I put flyers and posters up? If people buy some stuff from you or get a haircut at your place, uh, give them a discount, you know, give them a ticket. I had $5 discount tickets. I just, I, I found out every way to market. I was, I, I, I didn't have money for radio. I marketed, I went to every place. I swear I said this publicly. I don't think no comic in the country at my level, I'm not gonna say the Kevin Hart, the Cat Williams, they can do it because they're massive, but comics at my level can out promote me. Wow. I don't think none of them can out promote me. There's, I'm doing a casino, 95% sellout. I do another venue in South Florida called the um, Lauder Hill Performing Arts Center. We pack that up and that's a thousand or some seats. I do a Tallahassee, every month for over 16, going on 17 years, a club. I was doing the Bahamas, uh, a, a winter, summer, spring, and fall series. So I've been doing all these, my own shows. So you, And I don't bring no big names. When I make a deal with the venue, I say I'm bringing funny p p people because when you get the big names, it become their show. Mm -hmm. If I book Sid Entertainer, Sid can tell me who you want, who we don't want, right. it becomes his show. Bruce Bruce, it becomes his show. But if I get a Henry Welch, Damon Williams, get these funny brothers, uh, Double D, these people might not know who they are, but you know what? South Florida have trust me now. I trust who we bring because he has not brought nobody That's that wasn't dope, funny. Yeah. But uh, what motivated you to jump into the promotion part of it rather as than doing it. as you were doing it and at That's such a, a young age rather than just jumping out there and said like everybody else and just you know be a comic and travel and just do your comedy i was a sky cap at the airport mm -hmm. and i put in my two-week notice when i started comedy and come some of the old times said, you gonna be back out here i said no i'm not how you know i said because i ain't got no plan b plan a gonna work and I just knew where I had a gift for gab. I could talk to people. And I just started making it. My first show was seven, but I, kept, I said to myself, I can't go worse than that. <laughs> now, if I come back next week and it's four, then come back and it's three, I need to stop. Yeah. You know, you're going to have your off days and nights because the weather, because something else going on. But here it is now, 32 years later, I'm still doing Man. it. But you didn't see nobody doing what you were doing at that time. At that time, it was a comedy show that started here. But the level that I took it, they never, because I used to always, I watched what somebody do and know what to do different to make right, it better. To make it better. And I said, man, they're not doing this. And I learned one thing too, I tell young people, man, beefs, talk to these people, man. These people pay their hard earned money to come see you. Get mm -hmm. out there and tell them how much you enjoyed. You know how I start every show? How? I want to thank y'all for coming out tonight because yeah. you could have chose to stay home. And you came and here. You came here and I appreciate it. Give yourself a hand. That's how I start my every show. Because mm -hmm. wow. they could have stayed home. Right. And a lot of people think, it's an honor to see me. No, it's an honor for them people to see, to come and pay to see you. Wow. And they, you got to show them love too, because they paying their hard earned money. Who motivated you to become a comic? Because like, it's who did pins. you go? No, 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 other than that, like, you've been to comedy shows before that. Yeah. Who did you see on stage? Maybe a couple, I've, I've seen Eddie Murphy. I seen Martin Lawrence. Oh, you saw them on stage? Yeah, but I, this before I even done stand up. Right, right. And. My first time, who I patterned myself behind, who I liked, was Red Fox. Man. Because of what he did. You know. And you saw him perform? No. My mother seen him in Vegas. Oh, okay. And it's the way she told me. She know how much I love comedy. The way she was telling me the story, she know that I was, you know, exorbitant. It. It's like I was there. But when I watched Sanford and Son, Red Fox did something. I have yet to see a black artists do. Okay. I'm talking about to that extent. Red Fox, when he got the um, Sanford and Son, when they first gave him that show, they, we, we're going to audition these people. No, no. He said, I know some brothers and sisters that paid their dues and deserve a break. 
Mm. And I want to give him the opportunity. That was that's when he got. Him. That's when he got Whitman Mayo who played Grady, uh, Lawanda Page who played yeah. Ernesto, yeah. and Leroy and Skillet. His two homeboys was on wow. several episodes. I didn't know that. That's how he did um, the one that played uh, Bubba. Mm -hmm. he, all of them were stand up comics. They were all on the road with Red, were open up for Red and stuff. And he knew brothers and sisters that one. When you do this, as long as I have, you know who's who's about the business. Who going to go to work? You know, someone who might be a dope head, an alcoholic. And you might have to, and it's some comics I'm pretty sure was mad at Red because Red ain't picked him. But Red say, hell, you, wasn't, you didn't want to work when we was working. So why would I put you in front of these white folks on this network and know you an alcoholic? Or know you get high? Mm -hmm. Back then they were shooting heroin. Right. Know you a heroin, I, I can't do that. And he got the ones he felt that deserve a break. And look what happened. Wow, I want to ask mm -hmm. you about, um, um, K Dub, you you know K Dub. That's my man. I love K Dub. How, how how did you meet K Dub? I met K Dub. Uh, word of mouth. I have a cliche that I use. When comics call, they respect me so much that I said, if you refer somebody, and he or she not funny, I'm not booking them no more, nor you. Because this is show business, keyword business. Don't throw your homeboy on there, you don't, he not that funny. You just trying to throw him a bone, but he's not funny and not ready. And when they were telling me about K Dub, I brought him this one word, word him out. I hadn't seen him, and I took a chance, and he ripped. And we became cool ever since. K Dub uh, is one that he's, he's pouring into the DC Young Flies. He's pouring into the younger cats that's coming up through the internet phase. Right. And he's pulling them through, even the TIs. Like, yeah. Do you, did you see that in him early on that he'd be able to, uh, you know, be a, that leadership role to Hell no. Guys? And I'm going to tell him, he know ready. I tell him. KW used to beat, beat people ass back in the day. <laughs> he was fighting. What? <laughs> KW. K Dub used to beat K -Dub people. K Dub told ass. me if I keep talking about Ti because he ain't come on Boss Talk One One, he said I ain't gonna he ain't gonna let you talk about Ti. Yeah, because I had my five, I got five pictures on my wall, maybe six of Ti. I've been uh -huh. buying that damn cool for the longest. Now, and, and listen, and I said, man, that nigga ain't came over and did Boss Talk yet. I done supported this nigga since oh eight, right. since he brought that damn brand out. And uh, K Dub said, E, I'm gonna tell you something, man. That's my boy, man. I can't let you talk about Ti, man. But it was a blessing the way I linked up with K Dub at the all. I went and asked T.I. to come, but K-Dub walked up to me and he was like, man, I love your show. And I was like, man, I don't know who this nigga is because everybody yeah. walked up to me. I, I said, but nigga, I seen you somewhere before. You know what I'm saying? But then I got right back on my T.I. phase and they ignored the hell out of me, him and C-Rod and them, yeah. but it was cool. But then at the end of the day, K-Dub K came right out the door, came back to me again, hey man, I really like your show here. Uh, give me a number, whatever. Maybe I can link up with you. Yeah. In my mind, I'm saying, who in the hell is this nigga keep walking up to uh -huh. me? I'm trying to get the tip, tip, ignoring the shit out of me. So then, the next, I, I when I got to my thing, I, I, I looked him up. I said, uh -huh. damn, this nigga is really, this yeah. nigga a dope dude. K Dub is So then hilarious. I called him, man, right there. And when I called him, man, he came. You right. know what I mean? That's him. And, I, and he showed me love. Now I call him just, well, he called me sometime, give me hell about my guests, but I don't care about that. Me and him be going back and forth. But the thing is, man, he acknowledged me and he didn't have to do that, bro. Yeah. So when I, now, I'm always respecting for him even showing us love. That's why I like K, because K, one thing about him, he yeah. listened to the vets. But he not Hollywood. No, 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 but I'm saying as far as, uh -huh. I mean, he's a real down to earth yeah. dude. He listened to the vets. Like when he started out, KW used to beat your ass. Oh, he used to beat people's <laughs> ass. Oh, Lord. I'd have been on the show. K would tell you that we was on the show one time. <laughs> and he was just walking back and forth. I said, What's wrong, man? Boy, what's his name? Getting him a bust him in his mouth. As soon as he walked in, I said, K, you got to stop doing that, man. He you had a stop. beef with one of the other comedians? Yeah, well, something happened. When K said, I'm going to whoop his ass when I see him, he meant it. So he, when I see him, it's going down. Yeah. But then he got as, as more vets that's been out before him, talked to him, he realized, you know what, he right. Fight when you have to, man. Don't fight just to fight. You know what, man, Carlos Miller said that that, that you comedians, all y'all, there's some comedians that would knock niggas out. Yeah. Like Scruncho. Scruncho was one of them. It was, it, was a, it was a few of them that he yeah. named. And boy, I was laughing so hard because this was the fact of, I think I was referring to when, when uh, when I think it was when Cat Williams got up and said he'd punch 
uh, uh, Cedric the Entertainer in yeah. the stomach. <laughs> and I, I was just laughing about it, but he's like, man, comedians been talking crazy. Comedians been getting into it. Man, it's a lot of dudes. When I say, I'm going to tell you somebody who whooped your ass back in the days too. Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy will get you. Man, Charlie Murphy was a, Charlie Murphy had a set of hands. Charlie Murphy had a set of hands. I'm talking about straight. I don't know what his record was fighting, but he was undefeated. Because <laughs> I ain't never heard nobody whoop Charlie, but I heard Charlie whooped a whole lot of people. He just wasn't trying to hear. Yeah. And Charlie was like out bef you know, before me. Yeah, yeah. You know, with being Eddie's brother. He was like Eddie, like bodyguard or whatever. Don't mess with his little brother. And that's what that was. Dude. Yeah, he, man, I'm gonna tell you something. Comedians, a lot of them rappers think they, them, them comics, a lot of them brothers can fight. Sisters too. Sisters be squabbing Don't get it too. twisted. Some of them sisters can fight too. I'm talking about dead serious. Ask what, fem up. what female comedian can? Uh, Give me one. One female that I know, uh, one female. Like it's a young mm -hmm. female named uh, Katrina Pope. She whooped a comedian one night in the club. Wow. Beat her. Beat the hell out of her. Beat the hell out of her. Wow, that's crazy. But I, I could I could pick because it's people just trying to come up and it's going to be some back and forth, some ups and downs. Right. When it comes to, what about, and I, I don't want to move too, but what about T.I.? I, I went there a while ago. Like, when you seen him come from rap, go into comedy, what did you think about that? I'm going to tell you what I loved about Tip. And I pretty much told him this before. Tip respected the art of comedy that's so what I much. Seen in it too. Mm -hmm. He didn't just took the assumption, because you know, comedy and DJ is the most disrespected form of entertainment, black comedy and DJs. Because anybody feel they can do it when they got a hiatus. Mm -hmm. When they not acting or doing some reality show, I'm gonna go do some stand up. But they're not a comedian. Tip, open mic night, he went up almost every night. Every time through the week, you don't know where he going, he went up. And I, I had respect for him then, but really when I got top notch for him, I was headlining a comedy club one week. I was headlining Uptown Comedy Corner. I'm in the back in the green room. Tip came in the back, knocked on the door. Cause I'm the headline, I said, come in, he comes inside. I was like, oh, that's T.I. <laughs> What's up, man? Cool hey, little man. dude, ain't he? He said, hey man, you know, I don't want to disrespect your show, whatever, I was knowing for, can I go up and do like five or seven minutes? I say, hell, do 10. <laughs> and I told the feature, hey man, instead of you doing 20, you do 15. Yeah. Okay, let Tip go up here. And he went up there and did it. He respect the time, he respect the art of it. He will watch, he's like, he will watch you and learn. Yeah. And he respected, it. he did open mic night. Like I said, if you serious about this, do what it take to get what you need to get to, but don't just assume. Tip went up, I'm talking about, five, six nights a week. If he was home, he was going up. He was going up. He was going up, he was going up, he was going up, he was going And when he went on the road, Tip was small enough to know, okay, now I'm getting booked. Yeah, I'm gonna sell out comedy clubs because I'm T.I., but I want them people to respect this game called comedy. Mm -hmm. So he would host and bring three hellified comics with him. The K-Dub and them um, Duchess. Yeah, he got his crew. He would bring them Ronnie Jordan. He got yeah. his clique that he would bring. He got his clique. And he would host, do some time, bring one of them up. They crush it, do some more time. They crush it, do some time. Now Tip can headline and K-Dub will host. That's but he, right. he went through the years of going up and working out and getting it better. That's, I appreciate that and I love that. And I'll be telling people, man, the man love comedy. He love it. Yeah. It ain't just something to do when he ain't booked. He stay booked. If he ain't booked that, he'll do a movie. Yeah, he, he well respected. A TV anyway. show. I think it's the way he's he's grown. He the the it's phases a tip. Yeah. You know what I mean? The phases a tip when you look at him who he is now. He always been a great father and dad and family man. I you think that's what? more gangster than anything. We all change. Yeah, and I, I seen him. I change. tell people this. We changed in ten year increments. That's right. When you was a teen, you changed in your twenties. When you got in your thirties, you changed again. That's you got right. in your forties, you changed. You changed in ten year increments. We all do that. That's so true. Yeah. And I like I said, when I seen him this phase of him, it didn't surprise me because I've been following him now so long that when I seen him, I already thought it was gangster the way he mm -hmm. take care of his family and his kids. And no matter what they darts they throw at him, he continue to dodge those darts and continue to be a great father and a leader in yeah. his home, no matter what people say. And that's the part that made And he respect really his peers. In the rap game and in comedy. Oh, yeah, he, he respects respect, his peers. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he respects his As long peers. as you don't disrespect him. Yeah, but well, that's anybody. Yeah, but he's real. He's, he'll snap. You yeah, know? that's anybody. He's, he's, he definitely walked with his chest out. Let you me tell you something. <laughs> Tip went up and did a guest spot in front of me. 
Tip came up there in, in a Bentley SUV. Okay. Somebody hit his car before he went on stage. Somebody hit his car. They round the car. Security came up. Hey, man, young lady hit your car. Then hit your car. Then ditch your car. Tip went down. He looked over the edge. He told his people, hey, man, just take care of that, man. I'm about to go on stage. I'm about to go up. I'm looking at him like, man, your car. Man, that ain't, nothing, that ain't, that ain't nothing. That's material, man. That's why you have insurance. Straight. Which is true. I think, but I think that's because he's calm, cool, and collected now. Yeah, but now. somebody hit the average black man. If the tip would have got to hit, see, you looking at the tip now. Yeah. But that uh, rubber band man tip, yeah. that's a whole different tip. Okay, the yeah. uh, twenty fold, you know, yeah. you know, that's not the same tip. That's true. You know what I mean? But life be lifing, and that's kind of what you get. Like I said, you go through stuff, man. I got kids. You now my kids hitting people in their cars and all kind of there stuff. There you go. So you start to see these things. My you kids do. is all of them. My kids 30, 20 something. These kids, these, these my kids. Yeah. So when you start seeing them go through stuff, and you have to be calm, cool, and collective, else you'll lose your mind. <laughs> it's something she asked about young comics. Uh, something that I, I mess with them a lot. I be saying, y'all got it easy. Yeah. I yeah. say, y'all got it easy. Y'all suckers. <laughs> I say, you know how hard we had it? We had a beeper. Yeah. Somebody got a page you. You got to have a pocket full of quarters to call back and hoping that's a gig. Well, see, they used to pay you, you got a pocket full of quarters. You go off in that phone booth, don't yep. you? And them cats, we had to find a location. You had to know where you was going. They got GPS. Yeah. We and had we, to find we can. a location. They just tell you, get turn it left at the liquor store, keep going down. You had to find an address. Right. When you from out of town, see, Miami got street numbers. So it's kind of easy to navigate in Miami. When you go somewhere in South Carolina or, or Chicago and all that, and they got names. I'm off of, like when I got to Georgia, I'm at Peachtree Street. What the hell is Peachtree? You didn't right. know that. But these young cats got GPS for everything. We ain't had that. I said, y'all got cell phone. We had to mail our pictures in. <laughs> we had to mail a stack of pictures to the club. Every comedy club, you had to send 10 headshots. 10 headshots, 10 black and whites. These cats just put sin. You got a picture. I'm telling you, man, they got it easy. Technology, now. though. Technology. Damn, they got it easy. So who did you get your funny bone from, your mom or dad? You're going to laugh when I tell you this is my grandma. Hey, I love really? grandma. Tell me about grandma. My grandma would say the craziest stuff. I remember my grandparent owned a restaurant. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's, a, um, it's a icon in the community. It's like a landmark. Okay. The, the street now, my grandma passed some years back. And they named it after her? The street is named after her. That's what's her name? Maureen Ware. That was her name. And that's the name of the street? Yeah, Maureen Ware. And what's the name of the restaurant? Sonny's. Sonny's. That's my grandfather. Okay. So it was named after him. Y'all didn't take it over? My mother did. Okay. But now my mother then retired. And my uncle has it. Oh, so it's still, it's in, still in the family. family. Yeah. Okay. Then there's the next wave of young cousins and stuff in there working. So it's in the family. It's over 60 years. Where is it? In Hollandale, a city called Hollandale. Okay, it's a good food. Breakfast. Good breakfast yeah. all day long. Biscuits made from scratch. That's mm. the famous, they been famous for the biscuits. I need to go look them up. Yeah, it's called Sunny's. Sunny's Triangle Restaurant. Wow. Okay. Being out here in Miami, man, you hear yeah. things like the King of Diamonds, Trick Daddy, uh, Luke. Yeah. Like, you ever have, coming up, the way you came up, how was Luke in the city for you and, and then what he was doing? I met Luke before I got into comedy. Okay. I was a sky cap at the airport. Okay. And every time the two live crew was going out with them girls, I checked their bags. <laughs> so I got cool with the road manager. And I used to always tell them, boy, I want to get one of them girls, boy. Whoa, Put me down one of them two live crew. Man. The people don't realize, Luke was the first person who had female dancers. That's right. Remember all them New York dudes had dudes on stage dancing yeah, yeah, and pop yeah. locking. No, Luke brought girls. Yeah. And man, they come through the airport. Whew, I just wanted to, I wanted to holler at one of them Luke. I wanted to Luke dancer so bad, you just don't know. Wow. Boy, wow. I wanted to Luke dancer so bad back then, because that's in the 80s. Yeah. Man, you see them come out there, Luke get out there with them UM jackets on and stuff, and them girls come out. It was, it was a problem. I, said, I got you, ma'am. I got your bag. <laughs> I got you, ma'am. Man. Oh, boy, look at him. Yeah. I, 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 and then when I started comedy, Luke had me hosting, and he had a back school jam every year. Wow. Where Luke would use all nothing but local South Florida artists, and used to sell it out the Miami Arena back then. So he had 17, 18,000, and I was hosting, I was a young comic. That's when I knew I had the gift. 
to get control of that crowd and they listening to me doing a rap concert. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm doing jokes at a rap concert. Come on now. That people don't realize how hard that is. But Luke, they come to hear music, not yeah. you. Man, but Luke is just one of those guys, man. Like I said, when it comes down to the pyramids for the South. Yes. You look at um, say Luke, you look at uh Jay Prince, you look at um Birdman and Slim yep. and you look at Master P now. Yep. Like these are pinnacles, you know, maybe Tony Draper a little bit there yeah. from, you know, Suave House. Hip hop hit us in a way where when it came on the scene, it shifted things. <sighs> it was a different world. When you seen the way it came and then the, for the South to do the things it done, man, how how did you did you see it like me? Did you think of the entrepreneurship that was going on with those guys, or did you just love the music? I love the music. I love the music. I didn't understand the entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah. I that, think that that was, was, I think a lot of people were hurt by that. Yeah, I didn't. Un- hell, the artists didn't understand. That's that. what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know for sure because they were signing three sixty deal. They were getting shipped. Man, Nelly say he lost about seventy five bands on his sign up and everything. A lot of them brothers and, and UG, sisters. UGK lost. say the same thing. Yeah, a lot of them banging. That music? Yeah. Somebody call. Good. It's a car? Yeah, outside. That's not yeah. here. That's okay. outside. Um, when you think about just um, Trick Dad, is he really a good cook like they act, or is it just Cap? I've never had Trick food. My mother been to the restaurant. She love it. She says it's good. Yeah. But What's I, the name of the restaurant? Let's get a boy It's called Sundays. 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 Yes. And it's in Miami Gardens, Care City, where I grew no, up I at. need to pull up over there and get me something to eat. Or can they cook over there? You ain't been, but your mama says it's good. That line be li- outside I'm the building. I'm not saying no damn line. Well, cut it. You supposed to? Yeah, I go up to the front. What's the rapper made that song? You need to cut it. Oh, man, that's my boy, man. <laughs> yeah, no, you that nigga was bad. Cut the line. Yeah. So. Nobody like to wait, but just cut the line. Wow. Do you? What do you think about... Um, um, just uh, all the stuff that goes on in Miami, the events, everything is going down. Where can I go to get me a, a nice, uh, just just plate of food outside of Trick Daddy? You like Jamaican? Yeah. Oh man, hell! <laughs> Any place you see them colors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got so many Jamaican. Matter of fact, before I came here, I stopped at a Haitian restaurant. You did, and got some fish, and I don't even know the name of it. You know what's so crazy? I don't know the name of a lot of these places. I, you just Cuban, go to them, right? I, I go to all the Caribbean. I, I Cuba, I go Haitian, I go Jamaican. I, I do them three, like, back to back to back. And I get a soul food every so often, but I just get that so much. Wow. Thank you so much, man. Um, how, how, what Top three comedians of all time, dead or alive. My top three, Red Fox, one. For sure, I knew that. Richard Pryor, two. Three, who's kind of hard. Gotta cut it. Yeah. But three, my, th- Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. That's a dope, that's a dope. I gotta say that's Eddie a dope Murphy. Three. That's a dope three. That's man. why I patted myself, like I said, Red, because of what he did. Yeah. Uh, Richard, for how he opened the floodgates for us. And Eddie, how he just tore it down. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He tore it down. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Follow me on Instagram. You know, I'm an old, I'm an old school dude. I ain't got all that. What's that? that TikTok. Dude? TikTok, and I got a page, but ain't no, I ain't got no followers on there. Give me a follow me on Instagram at the real Marvin Dixon. Dixon is spelled D I X O N at the real Marvin Dixon. Or check me out. You know, I do radio too. Now I do syndicated okay. radio. Okay. Matter of fact, you talking about hip hop? I do with Chill Rock. I do the Chill what? Rock show. Yeah. I do you the Chill Rock Show. Rob? I do the radio with him every day. I've been doing it for over three years. That's who I want. I like that nigga, man. I would yeah. interview the old Chill Rock on Balls Talk 101. Well, you know, 1990 you... Chill Rock, y'all yeah. come on the scene with the. Yeah, you don't know. I can say that for stay you. right there. You don't know. He, he Jamaican. He should know that. He Jamaican. <laughs> she don't even know that. Yeah, Did Chub, you know Chill Rock? Chill is Jamaican. I didn't know he's, oh, really? Where? He's, he, I, you know what, I don't know where he's from now. I think Kingston. Kingston. Okay. Yeah, that's Chub, hard. I did Chub not is, know that. You just hit me with some information. Chubb is Jamaican. That's crazing. Yeah, he is Jamaican. I'm talking about he can talk it. He knows well, it. she was I just doing one, he could do that. Man. Yeah. Well, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Like I said, man, it's all love. Boss Talk 101. We appreciate man, you. Man, I appreciate uh, y'all, man. I seen you. Like I said, I was going to ask you about how was it on Def Comedy Jam? <laughs> how wonderful. You see my how first I went time back? Because I watched That was my first time oh. ever on TV in my life. Standing ovation. And they had me headline that show. That's all. I headlined the first show and didn't want to until uh, a guy named Bob Sumner said, hey, man, I'm going to be honest with you. Can't nobody 
follow that act you do because I used to do this act while I was strip and I'm being so skinny it was so funny and I got that from the strippers in Miami watching me I, and I just strip and I ain't talking about the female strippers because Miami had a lot of male exotic dancers yeah. you know, Thursday night was ladies night the club that I used to do so they would do that and I used to say I wonder if I get I bet if I strip it'd be funny as hell but if I strip and imitate the girl dancers it'd be funny so that got my niche and bam, I was gone. It was like, that, I got on Def Jam and I headlined the tour. But how I got on Def Jam was Skycap. Wow. Russell Simmons. Come on now. I went to check his bag and say, how can I audition? Stop it. And I swear I told Russell, uh, can you call the guy for me? He said, I'm gonna give you the number, just call him. I said, man, he gonna, get, he gonna answer your call. He not gonna answer mine. You smart enough to know that. And I called from the curve side. We had phones on the curve and he called him. Got the guy. He said, "This guy's persistent." And when I when he went to um to the Def Jam table, Russell go greet all the comedians. He said, "Hey, you that kid from Miami? Hey, <laughs> you got on. You must was funny." I said, "Yeah." And he just said, "You really said something to me, and here you is now on Def Jam." I said, "Yeah, man. I was serious." That's hard. I like that, man. I, I like met him and got his. And he called the guy, got me an audition. I flew there the next week and got on. Wow, man, that's dope, bro. Like I say, a lot of good brothers, man, do comedy, man. And when I first got into this, you know, I was like, man, some I want to do, com you know, interview the comedians. And, man, I ain't going to lie to you, man. Faison showed up, showed me so much love. Um, you know, um, man, it's a bunch of... You know, one thing about comics, man, we love to talk, entertain, uh, promote something, and show love to anybody, because we know how it was when we started. Trying to get on that stage is hard. Because somebody said, I don't want him on the stage. If they, once that you've been on it once or twice, they see you kind of funny. Oh no, oh no, don't put him on there again. Wow. Because they, they don't want you to take over mm -hmm. they juice. Yeah, exactly. I, I just, like I said, when I first started this, I, it was me, I think Pierre, Anna Shaw wasn't doing it like that at no. first. It was just me. I, I, I was doing everybody, all right. comedians, because I love the comedian world. And I ain't gonna lie, I was like, man, I, I, it's really some more to that. But the comedians just drove me. Country Wayne, like I said, all, Mike Bless, all the people that I, right. that I was connecting with the co comic world. Phase uh, on. But it was it, it was all, it was a bunch of Black Run, you I, know. I, I, I done a show Black Run. I love before. Black Run. That man is hilarious. He is mm -hmm. funny as hell. But, but and he from Dallas, so he you right around the people, corner. I hate when people say somebody's not funny. Like people online or audience, he ain't funny or she not funny. Sometimes it's the sh the room you're doing. Like some rooms you got rowdy rooms where they not coming. Put it like this, they come to talk, talk drink, to smoke, mm -hmm. and a show just happened to go on. Yeah. Where some people come to see, like comedy clubs, they come to see the show. Yeah. Whereas a room, they come in there, they be loud, rowdy. He ain't funny or she ain't funny. They funny if you listen to them. Yeah. And I did this one time. I took a cousin of mine where it's at a rowdy rooms. Man, they weren't even funny. It wasn't funny. I ain't say nothing. So about a month later, I took my cousin to a club, comedy club. We sat in there. Man, old dude was funny as hell, but that's the same dude went up second that night we was at that show. He said he wasn't funny. Wow. He said, damn, I said, that's what I told you about listening, man. Listening. If you listen to some cats, some cats can take over the room and do good. I can handle a rowdy room. I don't like to. Yeah. Because I'm getting older now. Some people say, man, come do my room. If you do a room on a Wednesday night and your show don't start at 11.30, I don't want to do that room. Wow. That's a rowdy crowd. 11.30 at night, I did a room not too long ago. They, I got on stage 11.47 on a Tuesday night. Yeah. When I got on stage, I said, I apologize. I thought I was supposed to have a show Tuesday night. I know it was going to be Wednesday morning. And it's a rowdy young crowd. Because <laughs> they ain't got nothing to do. Right. They just out there rowdy. And some people come to heckle, boo, mm -hmm. to try to mess you up. And I, I just hate that. It was a guy I remember years ago used, used to tell you, if you don't do good, I ain't paying you. But he would have some of his homeboys come in there and try to boo the comics. Like, this, you want your room to be known that people can't go get good entertainment or you just want to be, you want a rowdy room? And he thought about that. I was young then. I said, man, you don't do that. Because I found out what he do. A girl told me. Yeah. He paid him to, to boo so he ain't got to pay y'all. Oh, damn. Man, I ain't giving you no money. You ain't even do nothing up there. But, but I swear, even though this club shut down, you know, but I tell people, I say, man, what we do is hard. Man, I just- Making you, people laugh, you don't know. You you do that, you you like to bring them in. D. Ellis, 
Rude Jew. Yeah. Rude Jew. Uh, I know DLS. You do? That's, That's my boy. Yeah, we, did, uh, we just did St. Kitts. Really? Uh, th- he flying. We was at St. Kitts three <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> but he clean? Yeah. Did he have on a suit or something? That man, D. Ellis. <laughs> D. Let me tell you something when I first met D. Ellis. And D. know I'm telling the truth. That's my ace. The first year he did a Tom Johnny Cruise, because I've done it now 17 years straight. Wow. wow. I've done a Tom Johnny Cruise 17 years straight. man. D. Ellis, the first year on there, I'll never forget that. He was on there with his pops. Every day he had a suit on. I told you. We on a cruise ship. <laughs> Every day he had a three-piece suit on with some hard If his wife is there, she would be matching him to the team. Oh, he wasn't married then. Okay. He wasn't but married he was clean, then. Wasn't. This was his first year. He had, I swear to you, a three-piece. I say, my man, we on a cruise. <laughs> you got here, the pool sitting along the chair. You know, the, the pool chair. He out he there with hard bottoms. With some hard bottom shoes on. That's my boy. And the next year, he, when he, he came back, he was ready this time. He had on some shorts and t-shirts. How you wear a suit every day? I love it. Who wears a suit in the daytime on a ship by the pool? Man. And, 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 and you wonder why they don't want you to host nothing. <laughs> and he's an amazing host, though. No, I know that. No, yeah. I'm talking about that first year. That first, that first year. So what they do right. is, on Tom Jordan Cruise, sometimes you can walk by, they grab you. Okay. Need you to do this show because somebody not there don't be where but they. We need to check out one of those. That, that group. is. We've never been the live. I'm gonna tell y'all two things to go on your bucket list. Tom Johnny Cruz one. That's the liveest black event in the nation. Wow. Professional people by five four four thousand forty five hundred. Last year was the ship held forty eight hundred. Wow. A professional's having a good time every year. J- it just a ball. Concerts every night. Parties every night. Uh, different seminars, symposiums. It's so much going on. Authors, you have chefs doing stuff, and every night a chef will take over the main main um, dining thing. Uh, tonight gonna be so and so. You go in there. When you been on the cruise, you see oxtails. Mm-hmm. They oxtails and jerk chicken and stuff like that. Cause they have a Caribbean chef. He have all different type. Wow. Uh, and another place you got to go, Martha's Vineyard. Okay. The month of August, whichever week, pick it. The week, and I'm talking about weekdays, ain't got to be a weekend. Martha's Vineyard have the hottest comedy. Uh, it's a Martha's Vineyard comedy fest, the hottest festival. Every week is different comics. Every week, different comics. That's why I say you'll love it. Wow. Man, thank you so much, man. Again, man, no, the fist bump is you, real, man. man. Man, it's crazy, man. I didn't know you was going to be on here, man. I'm down here in Miami, Florida, man. It's going down, man. Y'all got to check my boy Marvin out. It's going to be crazy every time you come out to see him. Boss Talk 101 going to be at one of them shows now. I got to go see him now. It's only yes. right. Uh, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. Me.